Hey now, brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Minahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at Legendary Noir, or Marvel Noir, from Upper Deck. This is the newest small box expansion for Marvel Legendary, or Legendary Marvel deck building game. Uh, now, this is based in a alternate universe storyline that Marvel did some years back, where it was the same heroes, but different setting, a noir setting as the name implies, which is like dark, grim, and gritty, different types of origin stories, and different powers in some cases, or a complete lack of powers. Uh, uh, they specifically, I think, were focusing on, as far as the new heroes in this set, they were focusing on the heroes that actually had ongoing series for the duration of that storyline. So your heroes are Daredevil, Spider-Man. Um, Daredevil is actually the closest. I, I haven't read these, by the way. I'm, I'm very sorry. I know of them. I knew ab about them before the um, this set was announced, and I knew the synopses of them a little bit. Uh, Daredevil is kind of the closest to what he is in the the regular Marvel Universe, except he's like a circus performer in Marvel Noir. And uh, Spider-Man is really weird and off the wall, but he looks really cool. He's got goggles. Uh, Luke Cage, I don't know, is the other hero. I don't know much about what he's doing in Marvel Noir Universe, but there's some illusion that he doesn't actually have superpowers. He's just like a gumshoe detective. And then Iron Man. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Iron Man and Angel. Angel looks the dumbest. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. He's like the Rocketeer or something. And um, Iron Man is like has steampunk armor, which is really cool, and he's like an Indiana Jones type adventure. Uh, Tony Stark is. So that's your heroes. And then you've got uh, new masterminds, the Goblin, who's like an underworld boss, and Charles Xavier, who I, again, I'm just guessing what the storyline is here, because I don't know all the details, but he's like, uh, he has like a criminal organization of... Uh, thieves and cat burglars who are the X-Men, essentially. Uh, so that's the noir universe, and that's what they're basing this set in. It's your typical small box set with just a, a few heroes and a few masterminds and villain groups and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and take a look at what comes in the box, then we're going to come back. I'll let you know what I think. Legendary Noir is the newest small box expansion for Legendary Marvel. You'll need the base set or the villain set to play. Like all expansions, it introduces new heroes, masterminds, villain groups, schemes, a unique bystander, and some new mechanisms. We'll start with the heroes. All of them make use of the new mechanism Investigate. When you investigate, unless told otherwise, you'll look at the top two cards of either your deck or one of the other decks, choose a card you're investigating for, and then put the other card on top or bottom of the deck. For example, one of Angel Noir's cards has him choose a hero class, then investigate for a card of that class, and his ultimate card lets you investigate the hero deck and just take either card. Daredevil Noir, like his original counterpart, has you fishing for cards of a certain cost, this time using Investigate, with his ultimate card giving you bonuses for zero-cost cards you were able to stow on the bottom of the deck. Iron Man Noir has good combat cards that make you put another card on top of your deck, and you can simply investigate for them with his other cards. His ultimate card lets you investigate for three cards instead of two for the turn. Most of Luke Cage Noir's cards give you bonuses for cards that you played or investigated that cost four or more, including his ultimate which gives plus two combat for every four cost card that you played. Spider-Man Noir keeps up the tradition of having the spider cards in the game be really cheap and not individually that powerful, but working very well together. In particular, his ultimate lets you investigate every other player's deck and use your opponent's cards. Charles Xavier, Professor of Crime, is a mastermind who gets bonus combat for bystanders in the HQ and City. His master strikes make the heroes in the headquarters take hidden witnesses. This is another new mechanism in the game. Masterminds, villains, and in this particular case, HQ heroes can take some random bystanders face down. This will prevent you from fighting or recruiting that card until you dispose of the witness they are hiding behind. You can remove hidden witnesses at any time on your turn by spending two recruitment and taking them as if you res rescued them. Xavier always leads the X-Men Noir villains. They all either have fight or escape effects that force the players to investigate, sometimes to their detriment. The other mastermind is the Goblin, Underworld Boss. He's an expert at protecting himself via hidden witnesses, grabbing two at the start of the game and two from players' victory piles every time a Master Strike is drawn. Goblin always leads Goblin's Freak Show, which, as you might imagine, is full of villains who capture hidden witnesses and use them for their own ends. 
There are four new schemes in the game, some of which make use of the expansion's new mechanisms. The most interesting of which is Find the Split Personality Killer, which has the players trying to guess the identity of the killer via a stack of bystanders that keeps getting random hero deck cards added to it, and only the players who successfully guess the killer will win the game at the end. And finally, there is only one new bystander in the expansion and only one copy of it. Detective Wolverine will let you investigate the villain deck for a free, defeated villain. That is Legendary Noir. Well, this is a good set, and I'm really grateful for that because I believe that the last set... Uh, maybe I'm forgetting one in between. There's so many of these Marvel uh, Legendary expansions. But I think the last set was Deadpool. And I was very disappointed in that one because the jokes fell flat for me. Some of the abilities just weren't very interesting. Some of the fourth wall breaking stuff. While, yes, very thematic to that character. was just dumb in the game itself to actually play with. But uh, this is back to, I would say, standard Legendary form. And there's some really fun stuff here. Now, uh, I'll just get the one negative I have out of the way. And it's not really negative. It's just more of a nitpicky thing. And that's that while, yes, I have not read Marvel Noir, uh, so I'm, I can't really comment on all the ins and outs of the storyline and the thematics of it, um, it's not something I was particularly interested in. Some of the, the way the characters look, like Spider-Man, is pretty cool, but I'm still not interested in that storyline. And I don't think it was... I don't know how popular it was. And it's kind of weird that they went to this well so quickly, like uh, one of the what-if worlds of the Marvel Universe rather than a lot of other content they could have gone to, including very new content. It actually makes me wonder... Um, let's take a step back. Uh, I, for Some of you who follow me on Facebook and stuff like that know that I'm obsessed with a mobile game called Marvel Future Fight. Uh, I, I would recommend not playing it because you'll lose hours and hours of your life every day for the rest of eternity. <laughs> it's, it's To me, it's just a, it's a grindy RPG, and I love it. Uh, but... They Every time there's a new update, it usually has to do with something going on in the Marvel Universe. Whether it's the movies that have come out, or like Monsters Unleashed, which is one of their newer storylines. Um, and just some of the newest characters. They keep up to date with that stuff. Even though they have to play it months in advance. Because Marvel lets them know what's going on. And, say, and they, so they go, oh, let's time these releases so we have synergy. It doesn't seem like Upper Deck is doing that at all with Marvel. And I don't know whose fault that is. I don't know if that's Marvel just putting them out to pasture and saying, yeah, 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 you got the license, just do your own thing, uh, and not laying them in on it, or if Upper Decks is just not interested, and they're just diving back into the archives. But um, it's a bit odd, because it would be great. They could have had a Doctor Strange set when that movie came out. They could have had, um, I mean, Civil War, they did a Civil War set that had nothing to do with the movie, and it was like, uh, I think it was months after the movie actually came out. And then uh, now they have this cool storyline with Monsters Unleashed. They just had Civil War Two, which I know wasn't very good. But at least it was a thing. <laughs> and there doesn't seem to be any synergy. So now we just get Marvel Noir, which was, I think, years and years old at this point. And I don't know. It's just weird. Again, I know this is nitpicky. I'm just saying I wish there was a, a lot of what I like about Marvel Legendary are the characters and the themes and the storylines and the schemes, and that rhymes, but, and so it's weird that they're going back to this old stuff. Um, so, that's my one nitpicky complaint. Mechanically, though, I like this set. There's a lot to like here, and I can imagine myself using a lot of these characters. Uh, I love the investigate mechanic. It's very simple, and I think we've already seen variations of this. Like, I think Daredevil's character is almost, was almost doing that already. Um, and I think even Iron Fist and one of the other sets did something similar to the Investigate mechanism. Maybe I'm thinking of someone else, but uh, but I like it. It's just it's it's very uh, it has it has a lot of it's very simple, but there's a lot of different ways to use it. Like you can plumb all the different decks. It's usually your deck, but it might be the villain deck. It might be the hero deck. It might even be. I thought there was one card that might have done that to the mastermind tactics. It just lets you see them or something like that. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on that. But there just is a, there's a lot of flexibility with it, despite how simple it is. Especially with combo building and being able to stack the deck, so to speak, on the bottom of the deck. Really enjoy that. So that's a good mechanism to introduce. And I think that the heroes in this set use it well. Um, speaking of the individual heroes, I don't like Angel very much. But I just thought he looked dumb and his cards weren't particularly that interesting. Although, again, Investigate is interesting, 
but it's just not him that much. I like Spider Man because I, I like all the Spider Mans, uh, the Spider Men's. They because they're all super cheap, weirdly cheap. Like his Ultimate Card costs two, but that's because it's very specifically useful if you've been buying the other Spider Man cards and you have that synergy going on. How many times have I said synergy in this video? Keep track and take a drink each time. But um, so I like that card, and I'll be happy to use him with the other Spider folks that they've put out in other sets, like. The original Spider-Man, Spider-Gwen, and so on. Miles Morales. Um, I Iron Man's a little bit generic too, but I also like him. I love his card that says you have to put a card back on top of the deck. Again, that's combo potential right there. I love it. Uh, Luke Cage might be the most interesting from this set because I love that he's focusing on that number that cost four and encouraging you to get those cards. I love it when a game, when it, especially a deck building game and especially Legendary, gives you focus, which, you know... It might sound like it sucks to be limiting your freedom, but I love it when you have a plan and you try to co accommodate your deck to that plan. Um, and that's what Luke Cage's uh, hero does in this case, and I really like that. And Daredevil's pretty cool, too. I didn't like Daredevil's original uh, version, but Daredevil Noir seems to be a little bit more interesting with that investigate mechanic really flourishing. Uh, Masterminds and Villain Groups, the Hidden Witness thing, it's cool. Um... It adds another layer of cumbersomeness to the game, having to constantly be taking the bystanders and then uh, having to worry about taking those out as well as taking out villains, as well as taking out the mastermind him or herself. Um, well, in this case, just himself. Uh, but I still think it's an interesting idea, especially since uh, Charles Xavier, I think, can make the heroes in the HQ, which I guess represents his mind powers or just hypnosis or something i don't know what his character noir actually does but uh the idea that the heroes in the hq can take them and again hidden, the idea of the hidden witnesses is a barrier between the mastermind and the heroes so that's really cool um and all the villain groups are pretty interesting too the, the lot the game has the, the expansion really has a lot of flavor to it if you're into the noir thing and even though i'm not into the storyline of noir i like the way the the cards look they did a really good job with the artwork in this set. It is weird that there is exactly one bystander card. Not just one type of bystander card, but just one. I think that's a record for these sets. And it's Wolverine. <laughs> I don't know if that's a slight at Wolverine or what. Uh, but overall, I think this is a very good set. I don't think it's going to like... Uh, it's, it didn't break the mold. It's not like the most overwhelmingly cool set. I even think like the hated set that no one else likes, um, Fear Itself, I still like a little bit more than this. I'm just weird like that. I love the throw mechanism, but I still like this set a lot, and I would recommend it, especially since Deadpool expansion sucked. This is a good course correction. All I want now is more interesting and timely storylines to show up in Legendary. Please, Upper Deck, make that happen. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.